In the name of the one holy and undivided Trinity, amen. In an episode of the podcast Radio Lab about the afterlife, the question is posed, what happens when a group disperses and people go their separate ways? Does the group die or do they somehow carry it with them? A neurologist named David Eagleman wrote a short story for this episode called Metamorphosis. And he wrote in response to this question, when soldiers part ways at war's end, the breakup of the platoon triggers the same emotion as the death of a person. Participants amble away feeling that they were just part of something larger than themselves, something that they into it had a life, even though they can't quite put a finger on it. In this way, death is not only for humans, but for anything that existed. And it turns out that anything that enjoys a life enjoys an afterlife. When you die, you are grieved by all the atoms of which you were composed. I mean, they hung together for years whether it was sheets of skin or communities of spleen. But with your death, they don't die. Instead, they part ways, moving off in their separate directions, mourning the loss of a special time they shared together actually haunted by the feeling that they were once playing parts in something larger than themselves, something that had its own life, something they can hardly put a finger on. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. This is one of those keystone verses that many of us memorize in Sunday school. And one of the verses I most frequently get as an answer to the question, what is your favorite Bible verse? And as someone who now has an only son, personally, I feel much more strongly about this verse than I used to. Curiously though, it seems like we like this verse for the extreme statement of love in the first half, but sort of mentally cruise or glide through the second half. The piece about how everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Because I don't know if you noticed but we all still perish. Everyone is still dying. So far, everyone, including God, when God made an appearance, 
has died. Dying is the number one rule. 100% success rate. No exceptions so far. So what does this mean then, this bit about perishing? It can't be literal, first of all. This verse is a good argument against strict literal interpretations of scripture because it's very easily proven untrue by the fact that everybody is in fact perishing. And if we crawl back a little further in today's reading, we see Jesus teasing Nicodemus for taking his words literally. Nicodemus says, what is this born again nonsense? You can't make a full-grown human go back in their mother's body. Thank God. <laughs> and Jesus says, I'm not speaking literally. You don't get it. <laughs> and then proceeds to describe what happens with our new life in God being like wind. Or above. He takes this big question and answers it with poetry and circular language. Jesus is telling us that for things such as these, literal language stops working at a certain point, and you have to enter the realm of poem or image or song. We hear this too when he talks about the kingdom of God or the empire of heaven as something that is both somehow happening now and also participating in the long now of eternity. Despite many people's need to understand heaven as a gold brick and diamond mortar kind of place. But when Jesus talks about it, it is both here and not here, now and not yet, something weaving through this world, a melody weaving it together. We live in this funny in-between place where it does matter what we do here. It matters what we do with matter. It matters what we do with stuff, including our bodies, during this brief whisper of a life. And also, we live simultaneously in a different reality. We belong to a bigger and more mysterious story. And this is paralleled how Jesus uses language with Nicodemus. We use earthly language to talk about earthly things. When Jesus says, tend to the sick, that's pretty simple. It is not, in fact, a metaphor. Clothed to the naked is not a metaphor. It's just an instruction about bodies. And then also, there is a reality about those actions that transcends them. They participate in it, but it is not the totality of them. Some traditions within the church have tried to emphasize this piece about how what we do mattering, what we do with concrete reality mattering by framing it in terms of punishment or reward. The simple version of that is you behave well on earth, you go to heaven. You behave badly, you go to hell. Those are permanent eternal conditions, which is kind of a big deal. Eternity is eternity, and it's a lot of pressure to put on one teensy little nothing lifetime to say that what you do in it changes your outcome forever. I think the thing behind this emphasis is accurate. What it is really trying to tell us is that our participatory reality, the world of stuff, does connect to the long song and the long 
story. The way that those spleen cells and those sheets of skin do tell us something about the bigger thing that they were. The material reality of our world cooperating together for a short time does show us something about the bigger story, the body of Christ, the story of a cosmos loved hard into being. For a time, like those soldiers in their platoon, like those various parts of a body, our bodies and our material reality work together for a common purpose, for a bigger song. And there comes a time always when those parts stop, but the song stays. God so loved this world and this real world, not a fantasy blue orb, this dirty old world, that God sent God's only child so that we don't perish but have eternal life. So that we know that as we keep dying, and we do keep dying, that the vibrating, humming reality just underneath this one continues. After every body and every church and every gathering and every act of material kindness happens and then stops. Each one of those gatherings of cells and atoms and kindness makes that song stronger and happier. And while there is sadness, when one ends, another is always beginning. We play our part, choosing with our words and our bodies to offer ourselves to that eternity, to God. And it keeps singing and singing and singing. <laughs>